I was in Manila last week and I still had some Ether left in my Polony exchange account. I was looking for an easy way to get them. And I apologize in advance for the videos that you're going to see now because I just had my smartphone with me and I made these videos basically with my smartphone. But I think this represents a really good state of where we are with Bitcoin ATMs in late 2017. Now here's how I thought this will work. I convert my Ether to Bitcoin on Polony Exchange, I withdraw them into my Jax wallet, I go to the Bitcoin ATM, I send the Bitcoins to the ATM address and voila, I get my money. All in all, I thought this might take me one to two hours. You know, I just had a weekend in Manila and I still had to visit some friends and man, I couldn't be any more wrong. First of all, I needed to convert my Ether to Bitcoin and get them into my own wallet. I use checks on my phone. Luckily, I have one password installed, so I got all my credentials with me at all times. This obviously doesn't work if you leave your Trezor or Ledger S at home. But I'm a naughty boy, I always advise everyone to never ever leave money in an exchange, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I leave all my money, uh, part of my money, on Polony just for trading around and playing around. Well, okay, so I log in into my Polony exchange, enter the code I get per mail, change the Ether to Bitcoin, go to the withdrawal page, copy my Bitcoin address from JAX, paste it in Polony exchange, withdraw some Bitcoin and wait for the Bitcoin to arrive in my Bitcoin address. I'm sure tech savvy people have no problem with that, but I'm also very certain that average people will stop at this point and you know, just go to the embassy and try to get some money if they left their credit card at home. For me, it was just a game and I just wanted to try the Bitcoin ATM in Manila. But if I would have really lost my credit card or forgotten it at home, I probably would freak out at this point and would hope very much that the Bitcoin transaction would go through. Now I had to find a Bitcoin ATM. Here's one in Makati. I found out later that this is the red light district that whatever, I still went there anyway. I needed to get a ride there, first a jeepney to market market, then a grab. It's weekend, there's traffic jam everywhere. All in all, it took us about one and a half hours just to get to the Bitcoin ATM. Luckily, my Bitcoin transfer to checks got confirmed in the meantime. So here we are at the Bitcoin ATM. It's really in a side road, but with a huge Bitcoin sign on the entrance of a fairly new building. There are the instructions on the top of the Bitcoin ATM. It's a six step process. The average person can memorize seven steps at a time. We are pretty close to overwhelming everyone now, but here we go. You need to press withdrawal. You need to select the amount of peso you want to withdraw. You scan the QR code with your wallet on your phone and send the amount of Bitcoin to the address. If the amount of peso is over 5,000, then you need to wait for one block confirmation. I found out later that you need to wait regardless of the amount of peso. It's a precaution from the operator of the ATM. Okay, so you have the confirmation. You need to enter the redemption number and finally got the cash. That sounds super easy, does it? Now let's do it. So actually the process looks like this. You select withdrawal, fine. You need to enter the number to verify you can get text messages. I'm not sure how that will help with know your customers, but it's okay. You need to wait for the text to arrive and hopefully you don't get impatient like I was impatient and then tried another number in the meantime. So okay, you get the text, yay. You enter the code. You select the amount of peso to withdraw. You switch to your phone, you scan the barcode, you finally send off the transaction. You get that receipt that tells you the number to redeem your cash once the Bitcoin transaction is confirmed. Wow, well, guess what? It took over one and a half hours to actually confirm that single one transaction. We were walking around, we had drinks, we had food, we came back, we tried, didn't work. We were walking around again, we had more drinks, we came back, we almost gave up. I was actually so impatient that I tried another transaction with a higher mining fee with 2000 peso because I thought I really wanted to make this video for YouTube now. Okay, so how does I actually get my peso? It's first and foremost a little bit longer than the five minutes you have to wait. But after that, 
You enter your phone number again, you wait for the text to arrive, you enter the code in the text message, you enter the number to redeem your cash and you take your cash. Hooray! But what about the fees that you have to pay to the ATM operator? Obviously you don't get the best exchange rate. On that particular day, the Interbank Euro Filipino course was 1 Euro is 59.79 Filipino peso. So 5,000 peso are roughly 83.63 Euro. The Bitcoin Euro course on Kraken was 1 Bitcoin is 5,750 Euro at the time of withdrawal. I've sent 0.01525 Bitcoin to the ATM and another 0.00072094 Bitcoin in mining fees. That is 87.70 Euro to the ATM and 4 Euro 15 in mining fees. That means it cost me about 4.6% by the offered exchange rate for using that ATM and another 4 Euro 15 in using the blockchain. The ATM has a buy price listed of 1 Bitcoin is 370,927.35 peso and a sell price of 362,642.98 peso which is 5,484 euro buy and 6,065 euro sell, which is in alignment of about 5% of the Bitcoin price from Kraken at that time. The verdict. In an extreme emergency, it might be worthwhile to check out the Bitcoin ATMs. It's still better than traditional exchanges that um, may be around the city, but I don't see the average user using that anytime soon. It's just too complicated and it's way off what we are used from a normal banking ATM where you just go there, you plug your card in, you enter the number, you get your cash. Is it good? Was it a nice experience? It definitely was a nice experience to get finally 5,000 peso after four hours of driving around, playing around, drinking, eating, walking around and waiting. Will I use it again? Probably not because there's a very little chance that I really forget my credit card, but am I happy that I tried this? Definitely yes, I'm a tech savvy person and I love doing that. If you love this video, then you hit the subscribe button now and I see you hopefully in the next videos.